All right, welcome back, man. This is Aaron. Got Vic. We got quiz on the uh, locked in. And thank you all for liking and subscribing, commenting, tapping in with us. It's another Soul Purpose Sunday. We're here again to lock, uh, tap in with the best of the best conversations. And we also wanted to think about how does purpose and passion align? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how does it align? Go ahead, pop it off, bitch. Okay. Well, how does so? How does it align? Well, first of all, you know what I'm saying. What is a highlight from you all's week? I like to start off. With, okay, 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 okay. You try to go. You try to go that route. Okay, What's the highlight from y'all's week, man? This week, uh, highlight from my week. Oh my goodness, they tried to work the fool out me this week. Uh, highlight from my week. I started. Uh, a research project this week so that's been very interesting so this is my first time ever doing a, a research project totally on my own that's the biggest highlight i've had so far quiz how about you man i locked in on my project my research project this week um you know i've been given the opportunity to you know create budgets and program a little bit um this summer so I done got budgets, you know, approved and got money in and start ordering stuff. So we got some farm RX stuff coming on, you know, coming on, coming on up soon. So I think that was the highlight of my week. Oh yeah, and um Wild Camp worked the camp this week with some kids. It was a great camp. It was a camp on gardening and you know, um basically we taught them about the ecosystem and pollination and the process of plants growing and everything like that. And we themed it salsa, so you know they got to harvest uh, vegetables within different um, sauces, and we created different sauces, and the kids loved it. So it, it was a great event. So what is Farm RX? Farm RX is um, pretty much it's a program um, granted by the state of Georgia where um, Wholesome Ways is in partnership, and they pretty much qualify vegetables and herbs as medicine. So they call it Farm RX because they say whatever you grow on the farm is could be used as medicine or could be used medicinally. So they call it farm RX because a lot of the participants, the patients that they have within the program um, are using medicinal herbs and vegetables as medicine instead of, you know, putting them on, you know, hypertension and diabetes medicine and all that type of stuff. They just giving them vegetables and um, herbs at, at lower rates to um, help cure them pretty much. So. Uh, now, uh, Hancho, what you got going on? Oh, no. <laughs> so for me, um, outside of academia, today probably was probably the highlight of my week, going to the lake. It was absolutely beautiful outside. <laughs> good vibes, good food, good drinks. Um, but inside of academia, I guess, I found that I'm going to, I'm going to be doing some work with FFA, which we talked about um on last episode so i'm really excited about that and going to national conference um and i'll be doing some statewide ffa work this upcoming week week after next not this week but next week so i'm excited about that and now i'm thinking about it i don't think in any of the prior episodes we told people like what we really got going on so it kind of seemed just out of the blue like what we talk about as far as we are i know i'm a graduate student um going into my second year in my program, um, studying agriculture leadership. Uh, what about you, uh, Kelly? I'm going in my second year as well at Virginia Tech, studying ag agricultural leadership and community education. Um, yeah, this is my PhD program, so that's where I am now. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going into my last year uh, of nutritional sciences at South Carolina State University. and. Um, currently interning at UGA for the summer as the family consumer science um, specialist at the cooperative extension uh, for UGA. So it's been a big deal. Okay. Congratulations to you all. You all are doing great things. <laughs> he the huncho. He up here talking mess. Right. Y'all doing great things. You doing great things. Yeah. I, I guess I, I would never thought, shoot, if I go back, mm -hmm. 12 years, 12 years ago, I would never even thought about going into what I'm in now as far as chasing the dream of becoming an academic. 
or being a part of the higher society in the academic space, if you would say. I barely graduated high school. Me too. I did <laughs> Me not, too. I did not have a 3.0. I remember having a conversation uh, uh, with my mom. It's like, Aaron, you just satisfied with being a C student. I said, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in some of the classes, I'm like, man, I remember one class I would, would never be in there because the teachers always kicked me out. I always kicking me out, and it was, I think it was like chemistry class. But fast forward into this past year, I had a, a, a microbiology class, which focused on uh, like ruminant nutrition. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so interesting. And he was like, yeah, it's a lot of like your uh, chemistry class you took in high school. I was like, isn't it? I said, no, it was not, because I was never in. <laughs> <laughs> I was ne I was never in there. It, it really, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I played a part in it. I'm, I'm going ahead. Yes, I played a part of it, of not being in class, because if a joke was being cracked, I was going to. He was laugh. laughing at it. Ooh, was I? Was <laughs> I? Then, then, I, then also, I could think back before that, uh, ninth grade, being a freshman, like general biology, I was in there, but every day we was watching Lean on Me. <laughs> Lean on Me. Forgive me for talking about this right now. Every, oh, boy, boy. Every day, I don't know if my, my teacher was protesting at the time, because he was never there. And when he was there, we was watching Lean on Me. So I had to de develop my own science background, uh, unconventional. That, that, I ain't got a little off subject, but that, just thinking back just 12 years ago, I never thought I'd see myself here. But it have been different points in my life when I realized, okay, what the PhD can do to me. And once I said, okay, I wanted to go on that journey, I said, number one, I had to think about something I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I know it was going to be a lot of research. I know it was going to be a lot of writing. And I have never been the smartest person in the classroom. But I've always been the most diligent. And I've always been one of the more so disciplined and creating schedules and and taking the time to understand what the content was about and recognizing that I can do the work, but it may take me a little long. Yeah, I, I can I can totally understand that. I mean, I come from a household, like, it, it was a little bit different from yours as far as, like, you know, somebody sitting down with me and saying, you know, you might just be a good C student. Like, I didn't even have that conversation. Like, that was never a thing in my household. Like, I love my mama, but she wasn't asking about no grades, you know what I'm saying, how you doing your report card, even going to college, like, that one thing, it was like, okay, you want to go to college, that's cool, you know, I lived in that household where, you know, when it came to filling out FAFSA, it was like, you know, here go my tax information, go for it, like, it wasn't no, you know what I mean, it wasn't no, you know, it wasn't no big push as far as, like, education went, so, this totally left field for me. Like, man, I remember seeing my first 3.0 here and I was just like, I ain't seen nothing like that ever in my life. You know what I'm saying? For, for me, so this is interesting because for me, I was a star student in high school. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> we can tell. Oh, <laughs> you cannot tell. How, well, we, <laughs> there you go, there. Huh? You're still a shining star. I was a star student in high school, like a part of every club. I played lacrosse. I was in a band. Like I was involved. My mom was involved in the school. I had awards at graduation. Like I was a star student. But when I got to college, though, it all flipped. Like I graduated undergrad with like a two six, two seven, and so I mean. Baby, the grades was C's, D's, and S's. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's something to be proud of, but I, I didn't. My mom was on me, especially in high school, and I think she thought that it would have carried me on to college. But because I never, I never had to study. So me going to college, me having to pick up that skill, it just did not work out for me. So I did a lot of lying. You know what I'm saying? A lot of bad grades. Um... And and then it led to me trying to figure out what it is that I really, really need to tap in to do, which I don't know if this is where we want to transition and kind of start talking about 
you know, passion and purpose, but that's kind of where that came in. You know what I'm saying? Was really trying to figure out, figure out what that looked like because I never had to, I never had to study in high I never had to study in high school I left high school like a 3839 like I said awards out the wazoo was involved in everything and then when I got to college it just was totally it was night and day you know it was hard yeah. to adjust to that and see that definitely leads into passion and purpose because like I said for me it was the flip you know what I'm saying in primary school and then, you know, getting to college, well, being a non-traditional um, undergraduate student, it was totally different for me. Like, you know, I'm like that star student now, you know, 3.0, 3.8 GPA and all the, you know, clubs and events, you know, got different scholarships and stuff like that that people dream of at the university. So it's it's total opposite. And that that's kind of leading me into what what finding my purpose and passion look like for me. You know what I mean? Um, like you said, you didn't really have to try when you were in high school to get certain grades and to, you know, be that star student. It's kind of like that for me now, in a sense. It's like, I, I give a lot of effort, but for me it's natural, you know what I'm saying, getting certain, certain accolades and accomplishing certain things at the university because I have truly found my purpose and my passion, you know, and everything with me is aligned, so it's not something that I have to force or I have to really, really go looking for. Uh, I use this analogy. It's like like uh, two magnets. You know, you have a positive end and a negative end. When you try to put those two positive ends together, they're going to clash every time. Like, they never line up. But once you flip the the other magnet the opposite way, they automatically connect. So it's, it's like finding that niche and knowing that that's really for you is nothing that you really have to go searching for or force. It'll all align for you. So let me just ask, how do you all define that? How do you, how do you, you know what I'm saying, both of you how do you define passion and purpose and you know what i'm saying they can look different but in my eyes i think they they align to me but what does that look like for you all how do you all define that with me it's it's, it's very difficult sometimes because most time I'm, I'm thinking about as far as i learned something new this past year called emotional intelligence or realizing that you know, growing up, you hear people say, okay, leave your emotions outside the door. When you come inside a house or come to a workspace, space, space, be focused on what we get the task at hand. And sometimes, in some days, you can't leave the emotions outside. So I battle with that, trying to find that balance and realize, okay, cool, that being in certain places, you have to dig deep down inside and say, okay, why am I here? And so sometimes you're going to have to wear the emotion on your sleeve, but also using it as a great weapon that can catapult you to the next level. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may be me saying, okay, just simply saying, thank you, Lord, for having me have this opportunity right here. Mm -hmm. And always being grateful because realizing that things can change at a drop of a dime. And that has led to a lot of how I've been able to be motivated intrinsically and by saying, okay, God, I'm grateful for everything I have. The shirts on my back, go outside or go down the street, drive to the corner store or wherever. You might see somebody asking for a dollar or just a sandwich. You say, okay, I'm not in that position. So, I'm, I'm, but by the good, by the grace of God, I could be. So realizing that being grateful for every moment and allowing that, allowing my emotions to have some kind of balance and saying that, don't let anything overwhelm me. So that's what that's what I look at it as far as digging deep down inside as far as saying, okay, cool. I know I'm here for a reason, but allowing my emotions to play a great part in that to help take me to that next level. Mm -hmm. Quiz, what about you? How you how how you define like what does that mean to you? It means, you know, it means something different to everybody. Um, I think it's subjective, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what, is, what does that mean to you, like passion and purpose? How you it, 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 it allows for me as well. Like it, it definitely, it definitely means for me, it's a thing of like, okay, this is what I'm here for. This is what God made me for. You know, um, like I said, it's nothing that I had to force. I had to go look for. It's all aligned with what I have going on now. Like for instance, um, before I came to South Carolina, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed about it because 
I, at the time, you know, I was working two jobs. I was making real, real good money. So I didn't want to move out of, you know, what I felt like was already a blessing for me. But when I talked to my wife about it and I prayed on it and, and I started, you know, making trips up to South Carolina, things started to align. Like it wasn't a thing that I, I tried to, you know, it wasn't a thing that I was forcing, which let me know, like, I was moving in my purpose. And then along the way, I kept getting certain doors shut in my face. And I was thinking like, man, why God doing this to me? Or why he doing me like this? Or why he doing me like this? And then when everything would align, I would see exactly what he was trying to do in my life was let me know my purpose was aligning with my passion. And I was starting to get more of a passion for things that I had not necessarily looked at, you know what I'm saying, as a passion for me, which which really led me to my purpose. And, you know, like like Aaron said, it's still a thing of an everyday struggle, you know, trying to balance it all out and trying to figure out, okay, is this for me or is this not for me? But once certain things in line, it'll let you know that that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. I can remember coming to um, visit Aaron in South Carolina and looking for a place to stay. And I remember, like, I, I want to say, like, I was up one morning, real, real late at night while I was working as a mechanical technician. I was working night shifts there and I was teaching during the day. And I remember being up one night just looking for properties. And I told Aaron, I said, Aaron, I'm coming up to this weekend. And I, I, he was like, man, what you coming up here for? I said, man, I think I done found me a house. I drive up to Orangeburg. Me and Aaron go buy the property. One day, next week, I sign on it. Mm -hmm. Then I get to Orangeburg. I'm like, man, Aaron, I'm supposed to be going to Claflin. Things not going right. Aaron said, man, apply to South Carolina State. You apply to South Carolina State. I don't want even here to go to South Carolina State. I was supposed to be going to Claflin. A week later, I'm, I'm over in Aaron's face every day, like, tripping out. Like, man, I done moved my wife up here, man. I ain't in school. This ain't going the way it's supposed to go. This ain't going the way it's supposed to go. Man, talk to Dr. Whitaker. Two days later, what happened, Aaron? He signed me up for classes. You know what I mean? Then even with my major, like, I signed up. You know, I, I originally signed up, uh, signed in the, in the school as a, a chemistry major. I was a chemistry environmental track major. And I'm like, man, I'm good at this. Nobody ever told me I was smart. Like, I... I I'm really, really good at this. Like I can see myself doing this. I'm, I'm able to push different, um, different boundaries that I never knew I could academically. And then it was like, oh well, you about to get this scholarship. You got to switch your major. I'm like, I don't want to switch no major. Like, why would I do that? And then when I switched my major, everything else started to kind of align. I was like, okay, I see why I'm here now. Like, so like I was saying, like when you, when you, when you lead in a life in your passion, but you found your purpose through it, everything else going to just move in, in the way it's supposed to move. It's nothing that you have to force. Like, you're going to see it through. Yeah. For me, the word that kind of pops up when I think about, you know, passion and purpose, really uh, passion is is sacrifice, right? Like, even with both of you talk, especially you, Quez, just talk about your experiences with your wife. I love to hear you talk about your wife. I think Black love is the best love. <laughs> <laughs> don't do me like that but <laughs> but you know what i'm saying sacrifice right like the wish to which you would go to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish whatever that looks like so you quiz you know what i'm saying moving to the berg and whatever that looked like and not even living in the berg necessarily right living on the outskirts and having yeah. you and move your wife and you know both having to accommodate for one another on what whatever that looks like um i think about with, that with my journey you know what i'm saying finishing that south carolina state deciding not to go to iowa going to alaska doing four years that was sacrifice you know yeah. i fought hell for my folks you know what i'm saying for my friends not necessarily it wasn't the same for my friends as for my folks but it was just a, a level of understanding they didn't understand and still some don't understand why i do the things that i do right why i'm not home out of time why i do this why i'm always in school one of my friends i was just home and her dad made the comment kelly always in school but they don't quite understand or really under you know know what it is that i'm trying to kind that's okay everybody don't understand it they'll understand it when they see that you know what i'm saying that things start really being in motion but um that, that's that's the word that really pops out to me and, it, and it's it didn't pop out to me until after I've gone through all of this, right? So really understanding what sacrifice looks like spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, not just being away from family, but 
just all those pieces interconnected is sacrifice. Yeah, yeah and definitely, so I think, definitely. And so I, I ain't gonna cut you off, but I think um, just real quick, that's what and that's what I think all encapsulates what passion and purpose is. The wish to which you would go to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish you know what i'm saying having to sacrifice those things that you hold value to i absolutely love my family you know what i'm saying and i had to sacrifice that so i, I, I piggyback on that sacrifice i think every person i ever looked up to or company or whatever it may be uh i looked at say okay cool it's a certain level of sacrifice you have to let them take to go to that next level Cause even if I uh, give the perfect example, somebody like me, somebody like Jesus, man, the man sacrificed his life. Like, come on, the man sacrificed his life for us, you know what I'm saying, to live a new life. And recognize, okay, if this man can do that, what can I, what do I need to do that I can control to help catapult me to the next level? And, and even with me, like, as far as y'all being vulnerable and saying like different things y'all didn't sacrifice, I know with me, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not married or anything like that, but I didn't sacrifice a lot of friendships, a lot of uh, relationships to go to the next level as far as the, um, to, you know what I'm saying, to fulfill the purpose I feel that God has called in my life. So, and it's getting get to this point, but sometimes I realize, okay, I could have had this, could have had that, but I realized, it's a greater call because once I look back on it, I'm so thankful. Like, damn, like I just said earlier, never would have thought 12 years ago when I'd be on a pursuit to obtain a terminal degree. So it's a lot that goes into that word sacrifice. Every great person has done it. Mm -hmm. I want to throw out there too, though, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to put Aaron on the spot, but I'm going to put him on the spot. But you know what I'm saying? As a celebration, for accomplishments, we went to Vegas, right? We went to Vegas, that was what, 2018, 2019? Something like that. Went to Vegas, he found out that he got accepted to Southern, right? But into their PhD program. I mean, it sounded great. But then, you know what I'm saying, hindsight, when we talk about it too, but looking back on it, that was a sacrifice, right? Because he didn't end up going to Southern. He went back to South Carolina State with <laughs> when we talk about tears and you know what I'm saying a pecking system South Carolina State down there we love our alma mater but you yeah. know what I'm saying South Carolina State is not at that caliber just yet and Southern is not at that caliber you know what I'm saying they they have a level of um hold on I, I don't want to cut y'all let me, let me uh put a bookmark on that and you're gonna pick it back up because you don't like what I'm about to say okay it's a great saying me and Vic then adopted we're gonna say that it's a hall of fame then it's a hall of game. It's a hall of game. <laughs> it's a hall of game. <laughs> it's a hall of fame. It's a hall of game. You got you, you get in the club with the general admission. Then you get in the club as a VIP section. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's levels. Yeah. It's right. levels. For sure. So I'll make the, the story quick, but you know what I'm saying? Getting Shout out to Prime. Huh? Shout out to Prime. Shout out to that boy Prime. Shout out to Coach Prime. You know, but, <laughs> but going into that, well, I mean, we was turned up in Vegas like – excited that he got accepted to um to to southern at that time i hadn't gotten accepted in nobody's school and that was fine you know what i'm saying but he had got accepted in the southern and it was just a joyous moment but then these things came up and it just didn't add up you know what i'm saying and so he had to really sit in sit in who he was and sit in the situation to really understand like this is great but this ain't that's not where I need to be you know situational we're not gonna go into the different situations and all that stuff but he had to sit back and realize even though I got accepted it's a great thing it's a momentous thing I can't take that acceptance and so for that he had to go back to South Carolina State and do his thing and really that's a sacrifice if anybody knows going back to the burg as a grown-ass man as a grown man, that's a sacrifice because the burg is it's a bubble, you know what I'm saying? So I say that to say 
sacrifice like it's a it's a hell of a thing but you got to be willing to sit in it and realize that guys got something much greater i'm not gonna turn to a sermon but guys got some something so much greater for you but you have to be able to sit in that and realize that for yourself in order for that to come to fruition you know what i'm saying or to 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 for that to come to life yeah and you know, I, sit in it believe it for it to come to life and i had to sit back to myself how i'm gonna be selfish with god right how am I gonna be selfish with God? He didn't bless me with all these opportunities. I'm like, dang, I can't. I ain't. I'm not going there. And he, and he said, and, he, and I remember one day sitting down in deep meditation and prayer, and he came to me and said, "You know, I got you. You sit back. I got you. You do continue to do your part. I got you." I'm like, man, man, take me on your wildest dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I, I said, I said, man, look here. I ain't really trying to hear it right now. I'm going to be honest. I ain't trying to hear it right now. But look at you ain't never failed me. So I'm going to lock in. And look yeah, because like, like you were saying, Aaron, even looking back 10, 12 years from now, I mean, remember me and you being in a place we ain't going to mention, but we just, boy, never would have thought. No. Never would have thought. And it's like, like we were saying, when you moving in your purpose, Certain things just align for you, and you can't negate what God has actually done in your life and what He has going on in your life because certain things that you don't even imagine to come to you come in your lap tenfold, you know. And I think you know that whole sacrifice bit kind of leads into what what will be our next topic, you know, what what will be y'all advice to somebody else that you know was trying to figure out, okay, what is my purpose, what is my passion like, how do I find my purpose of passion, like you know, where would I go? from here if i'm at square one if we're talking to the people in college park in decatur in atlanta and wherever around the metro atlanta area that really don't have hope or like trying to figure things out or really don't you know know where to go how would we you know how would we get that to them like how would we tell them you know keep hope or you know keep moving or you know this is how you find your purpose of passion I, oh you about to say something here no, I was just going to say as far as if I had to talk, talking to myself 10 years ago or just talking to somebody that I met and I could give them some kind of advice was to really hone in to who you are. It may be something totally, you might be into something totally different than the people that you run around. Quote, unquote, like all three of us. Yeah, we had lived totally separate lives but one thing brought us all together and we got a bond that could not be broke. So talking to somebody that's younger, talking to my younger self, hone in to what you feel that's right there in that gut. There's a book I read a long time ago uh, called Straight From The Gut by Jack Welsh, one of the guys who helped build uh, NBC to what it is today. And yeah, NBC and uh, General Electric. And when you get that gut feeling and saying, okay, cool, I, I really don't feel this is what I need to be doing or feeling like, okay, I really know what I want to do. Even when you step out on that journey, it ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be easy. But it's up to you to dig down each and every day and say, how bad do I want? Am I willing to do what it takes to go to that next level? Do I have what it takes to go to that level? And guess what the question is and, and the answer? You do. <laughs> you do. You, 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 you got what it takes to go to the next level. Once you realize that you didn't been called, and when you when that when that inner person talking to you saying, hey, don't, don't do that. You know what you need to be doing. Cause some days I sit back in the room like, boy, I, I ain't did uh as much writing or reading as I need to do. Guess what I say? I go outside, I might walk around, I say, okay. I might call my mom and say, mom, time to lock in. She's like, you know what time it is. And, and, I, and I open that book, go to the library, realize that I need to be doing something mm -hmm. that's going to take me to that next level that I didn't pray and then ask God to bless me with an opportunity of a lifetime. So whatever they may, may be, you're going to have to put in the work after you pursue that goal or pursue their objective or something that you feel that's unattainable, you have to put in the work. And every day, when it gets hard, 
and it's raining outside, and you and everything ain't going right, girlfriend, uh, boyfriend, and left you, and you saying, "Hey, I still gotta walk this walk," and then deep down inside, and say, "How bad do I want it?" Mm -hmm. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I say I was so I was listening, I was watching um Trouble, R.I.P. the Trouble. Long live, um, boy Trump. Long live Trump. Long live Trump. I was watching his, um, his, you know, his ceremony, and the pastor was doing a eulogy or whatever. Um, but he brought up, he was like, you know, you here today. The saying was, you here today and gone tomorrow. But now it's here today, and you you can be gone today. You know what I'm saying? That's a real. That's a real statement. I think with society and just the times that we're in now, we get so caught up in what people you how people view us you know what i'm saying um j just simple as that how people view us and so i would say for me even if people don't understand what it is that you got going on you know what i'm saying really hone in on what you got going on it don't matter what nobody else think you got going on as long as you know understand appreciate and really acknowledge the things that you got going on that's all that matters the rest of it gonna come the money gonna come the people gonna come the people gonna follow you know what i'm saying but all that because we brought into this world alone essentially and we take we're taken out of this world alone you know what i'm saying so if you're not happy with yourself if you're not appreciative of, of yourself if you don't if you don't really um take acknowledgement of the things that it is that you want to achieve and have passion about other people not gonna hop on board you know what I'm saying? So for me, and, and it didn't take me long to understand that because it ain't a lot of us in agriculture, period. You know what I'm saying? Even my own family, my cousins don't quite understand. Now they're willing to understand a little bit more, but they don't have as much passion behind it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I would say to somebody who's trying to figure that out, just take it a day at a time. And piggybacking off of what Aaron was, Aaron was saying, like, make sure that you are sewing into your into your day even if that's just reading a book out of a you know a chapter out of a book a page out of a book what are you sewing into your day if if you're going to work out right if you go do a workout you're sewing into your day if you go and do uh read a sermon or listen to a sermon you're sewing into your day so i'd say take it a day at a time it's gonna come don't rush it you don't want you don't ever want to rush nothing that is truly truly meant for you to really uh what's the word i'm looking for something that's truly for you you know what i'm saying you don't ever want nothing microwave yeah. like nobody nobody wants that it's not sustainable it's not long lasting and it's not real yeah like even when i was talking to uh somebody earlier i was like would you want a million dollars today or ten million dollars at the end of the week Lord, and most people probably use a billion dollars today. Lord, Lord willing, Lord wake you up every morning. Right. But a million today or ten million dollars at the end of the week. And also, to what you were saying, Vic, just stay in your in your lane. Stay in your lane. Yeah. I didn't live, you know what I'm saying, over a quarter century. I have never seen somebody at the track meet win the race in somebody else's lane. Stay in your lane. It don't happen that way. Stay just, in your lane. Yeah, just to piggyback off of what both of y'all are saying, you know, um, one of the things that I that I realized that both of you uh talked a lot about was knowing yourself and and you know being within yourself and understanding you, you know what I'm saying, ultimately. And I feel like, you know, Aaron, okay, okay, so so Aaron, your mama got a saying where she always said, Man, you gotta people, you gotta meet people where they at. I feel like we forget to oh, meet us, but I'm we sorry. Have, I'm sorry to cut you off. That's my saying of the century. Yeah, you got to meet, your, meet people where they at. Yeah, we got to start with ourselves. You got to meet yourself where you at. Mm -hmm. You know, don't try to, you know, overshoot what you got going on. Don't undershoot what you got going on either. But just hone in on what you got going on and everything will line up. Yeah. Everything will line up. If you're really moving in the right way and it's not you know what i'm saying fake and you know all of that what you was talking about vic everything can line up the way it's supposed to line up yeah because sometimes i gotta realize too what i uh like to say as well as far as let people do them 
do you yeah <laughs> do you yeah because at the end of the day you got to make sure you happy ain't nobody else gonna do that for you yeah and then like we said earlier when it's all said and done when you gotta go see that man upstairs you gonna, he gonna say what have you done yeah you got to walk in that room yeah that's you. Now, exactly and, and and i realize that too as far as being in, the, in this field in the agriculture field it's gonna be a lot of trying times it's gonna be a lot of trying times because Last time I checked, I woke up black, and when I go to sleep, I'm gonna be black too. So mm -hmm. a lot of different things that. It, then I went to a black uh, college as well. So recognizing that I do have certain things that I cannot help, I have to continue to keep on pressing on. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and it's it's not gonna be easy, like I was saying earlier, as far as learning my lane because I, look, I'm working on a terminal degree. I still don't really all the way truly know my line yet. <laughs> People get to ask me, oh, so what are you, what are you writing? You be chill talking to me about that. <laughs> but guess what? I'm taking a day at a time, I'm taking a class at a time, and I'm just thankful and I'm embracing the whole process because I recognize I'm here for a reason, but I'm not trying to rush nothing. I'm embracing all the whole journey because once it's all said and done, I want the man upstairs to say, well done, good and worthy servant. I'm I'm gonna just throw this in there too, just to piggyback off of that. People, are, I don't think people people truly understand what, like how important and how valuable it is to embrace the journey. I mean, down to your lowest of the lowest moments. You know what I'm saying? Like when you at the bottom of the barrel, that's the best time. It is. It's the best time. Why? Because you can't go no lower than that. You know what I'm saying? All you can go is up at this point. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta want it. You gotta want it for yourself. But also to that, when you get to that point, it just is way more, it's way more exhilarating, it's way more exciting, it's way more rewarding. Cause you can look back on it and say, damn, like I done made it from that. Ain't no going back to that. Can't nobody stop me. I, Cause I done made it from that. Now, granted. Some people that looks very different, and yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? It looks very different, and that's okay because that's your journey. That's what makes you unique. But at the same time, it's just like, damn, like I done made it from that. I, you know what I'm saying? Is whatever you accomplish from that point on is way more re rewarding and worth working for and striving for and, and more appreciated, even if nobody else on earth appreciate it. You appreciate it because you know the shit you had to go through to get from that point to where you are today. You know what I'm saying? So just, I want people, you know, whoever's tapping in, young people, old people, whatever. Remember that, you know what I'm saying? Like when you down in them dumps and you feeling like I can't go nowhere from there, hone in on that. Get hungry. That's what, that's what's going to make you hungry. And then we get to that point, you're going to look back and be like, I'm so proud of myself. Even if nobody else on this world proud of me, I'm proud of me. Because yeah, I, I also want to piggyback on this, like, then we all share this as well because we all thought we suffered from not being picked first or being passed over or, or tripping up. Or, or, Tom Brady's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we just we the six round draft pick. We got we yeah. got we got drafted, but we was in the last round. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, Lord, I'm not, I'm looking. Up. You got the Hall of Fame, and you got the Hall of Game. Always remember that. Yeah. So go tap in next week. I'm so glad you all are tuning in and growing with us. This has probably been one of the most thoughtful, heartfelt episodes. And I want to say thank you all again for locking in with us. Oh, and last thing, we're going to plug in every episode. We will be at Invest Fest. Okay, let, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, Invest okay. Fest coming. Yeah. Oh. And this fest is on the way. We're gonna plug it in. We got a new merch. Just if you can get a ticket, we'll drop the link in the um in the description um below or whatever. But tap in, meet us there. We'll have a booth set up. Ooh, talk, yeah, this fest. Talk to them because if you miss out on what opportunity we about to show y'all, posted by like you ain't never seen nothing like this. <laughs> Every, everybody talking about this, talking about that. You ain't never seen nothing like this. I promise. Real talk. And once it grow, and we all looking for partners. 
We all looking for partners. We all looking for partners. All looking for partners. Yeah, shout out to Iron Leisure. Iron Leisure. Shout you know out to Iron Leisure. Support black colleges. You know, that's the dream partnership right there. Yeah. yeah. Let's make something happen. Let's put that into fruition. Yeah, real talk. So we're going to uh, sign out right now. Please meet us at Invest Fest uh, in August. Buy your ticket. Link below. And talk to y'all later. <laughs> talk to y'all later.